want to speak real Indonesian from your first lesson, sign up for your free lifetime account at IndonesianPod101.com. In this lesson, we'll learn some of the most common greetings used in Indonesia. Sudah siap? Are you ready? Mari kita mulai. So let's start. The most used informal greeting is Halo. Halo. Halo means hi or hello. We use it when we meet. It is very casual, so we should only use this greeting with friends or family. If you need to greet someone in a formal situation, say Selamat siang. Selamat siang. Literally, Selamat siang means good day. We can use Selamat siang only during the daytime, from 11 a.m. until 3 p.m. During the afternoon, we say Selamat sore. Selamat sore. Sore is Indonesian for afternoon, so Selamat sore means good afternoon. This is used from about 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. During the night, we say Selamat malam. Selamat malam. Malam is Indonesian for night. This is used from 6 p.m. to midnight. And finally, during the morning, we say Selamat pagi. Selamat pagi. Pagi is Indonesian for morning. This is used in the morning until 11 a.m. These four greetings are used when we meet someone. But when we leave, we don't say them again. When we part in Indonesia, we say Selamat tinggal. Selamat tinggal. Selamat tinggal means goodbye. And it is a formal expression. Finally, in Indonesian, we have an expression meaning see you that can be considered both formal and informal. Sampai jumpa. Sampai jumpa. Now, you can greet people in many different ways in Indonesian. Let's review them all again. When meeting in informal situations, we say hello. When meeting older people or someone we don't know, we say Selamat pagi in the morning, Selamat siang in the early afternoon, Selamat sore in the evening, or Selamat malam at night. When living in a formal situation, we say Selamat tinggal. When living, no matter whether it's a formal or informal situation, Sampai jumpa. It's easy, isn't it? Now it's time for Fira's insights. In formal situations, Indonesian people commonly greet each other by shaking hands and bowing their heads slightly. On the other hand, if we meet someone we are very friendly with, we can just wave. In this lesson, you're going to learn how to introduce yourself in Indonesian. But first, it is important to clarify the difference between formal and informal speech. Let's first see how Indonesian people introduce themselves in an informal situation. Hello, nama saya Vira. Hi, my name is Vira. Hello, nama saya Vira. Start by saying, Hello, nama saya. Then, say your name. Nama saya Vira. Hello, nama saya Vira. And now, let's see the same sentence in formal speech. Selamat siang, nama saya Vira Lukito. Senang bertemu dengan Anda. My name is Vira Lukito. Nice to meet you. Selamat siang. Nama saya Vira Lukito. Senang bertemu dengan Anda. So, what has changed from the previous introduction? Let's take a close look at this together. Hello is an informal way of saying hello in Indonesian. In formal situations, you want to use Selamat Siang in place for good afternoon. Nama saya Vira has not been changed. In both cases, nama saya means my name is. However, during a formal self-introduction, we also say our last name. So I said, Vira Lukito. For a formal situation, you might want to add Senang bertemu dengan Anda which is the polite way to say, nice to meet you. One more time, the informal way to introduce yourself in Indonesian is, Halo, nama saya Vira. The formal way to introduce yourself is, Selamat siang, nama saya Vira Lukito. Senang bertemu dengan Anda. Now, it's time for Vira's insights. 
When you introduce yourself, it's a good habit to shake hands in Indonesia. If you use the correct sentence with Indonesian people, they are definitely going to be impressed. Want to get cheat sheets, audiobooks, lessons, apps, and much more every month for free? Just click the link in the description to get your free language gifts of the month. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to use good manners as we thank people. Sudah siap? Are you ready? Mari kita mulai. So let's start. There are several ways to thank people. Let's start with the easiest. It is only one word. Makasih. Makasih. Makasih means thanks. To make this phrase stronger, you just need to add banyak. Makasih banyak. Makasih banyak. Banyak means a lot. So makasih banyak is like saying thank you very much. During the last lesson, we mentioned both the informal and the formal way of speaking Indonesian. Makasih is the informal way to thank someone. If you want to be more formal, there is another phrase you should use. Terima kasih. Terima kasih. Let's break this phrase down. Terima means receive and kasih stands for kindness. But overall, terima kasih means thank you. You can also strengthen this phrase and say thank you very much. Terima kasih banyak. How do you answer? It's easy. There are basically two different ways to do it. The first is sama-sama. Sama-sama. Sama-sama literally means same-same, but it is the equivalent of you are welcome. The other way to say you are welcome is the expression kembali. Kembali. Literally, this word means back or return, but it stands for thanks right back at you. This has become a common and polite way to respond to someone thanking you. So, when someone says makasih to you, simply reply with kembali. Now, it's time for Fira's insights. Makasih is actually the shortened form for terima kasih, and it should be used within casual conversation among friends and family. But, terima kasih can be used with just about anyone, anywhere, and at any time. First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? Seorang pria dan wanita sedang berbicara. Berapa umur pria itu sekarang? Sebentar lagi hari ulang tahun kamu. Iya, lusa ini. Ulang tahun yang keberapa jadinya? Ulang tahun yang ke-60. Selamat. Mari kita rayakan. Terima kasih banyak. Berapa umur pria itu sekarang? Seorang pria dan wanita sedang berbicara. Berapa umur pria itu sekarang? Sebentar lagi hari ulang tahun kamu. Iya, lusa ini. Ulang tahun yang keberapa jadinya? Ulang tahun yang ke-60. Selamat. Mari kita rayakan. Terima kasih banyak. First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? Seorang pria dan wanita sedang berbicara. Siapa yang tinggal bersama pria itu? Mengapa kamu tidak mampir ke rumah saya kapan-kapan? Terima kasih. Tapi saya merasa sedikit gugup. Saya ingin tahu tentang keluargamu sebelum bertemu dengan mereka. Tentu saja. Ayah saya adalah seorang pegawai kantor dan hobinya memancing. Ibu saya adalah seorang ibu rumah tangga, dan dia pandai memasak. Apakah kamu memiliki saudara laki-laki atau perempuan? Iya, saya punya kakak perempuan dan adik laki-laki. Kakak perempuan saya telah menikah dan tinggal di luar negeri. Adik laki-laki saya adalah seorang siswa SMA. Kamu memiliki keluarga yang baik, 
saya ingin bertemu dan berbicara dengan mereka. Siapa yang tinggal bersama pria itu? Seorang pria dan wanita sedang berbicara. Siapa yang tinggal bersama pria itu? Mengapa kamu tidak mampir ke rumah saya kapan-kapan? Terima kasih. Tapi saya merasa sedikit gugup. Saya ingin tahu tentang keluargamu sebelum bertemu dengan mereka. Tentu saja. Ayah saya adalah seorang pegawai kantor dan hobinya memancing. Ibu saya adalah seorang ibu rumah tangga, dan dia pandai memasak. Apakah kamu memiliki saudara laki-laki atau perempuan? Iya, saya punya kakak perempuan dan adik laki-laki. Kakak perempuan saya telah menikah dan tinggal di luar negeri. Adik laki-laki saya adalah seorang siswa SMA. Kamu memiliki keluarga yang baik. Saya ingin bertemu dan berbicara dengan mereka. When learning a new language, it's easy to think, I don't think I'm making any progress. What if I never reach my goals? We all get these thoughts from time to time. But are they worth being scared of? What are the fears language learners tend to have the most? And how can you learn to overcome them? Here are the top four language learning fears, according to our users. Number one, I'm not good enough to start speaking yet. This is a pretty common fear or misconception that most learners have. Here's how you overcome it. The best way to get good at speaking is to start speaking from day one. You need to open your mouth and just start talking. If you think you're not good enough, just focus on the lines you want to say. Number two, I'm afraid I'll never be fluent. You've got to set small, specific goals. Make daily goals, like having just a five minute conversation. As these small goals add up, you'll be speaking more comfortably. Number three, I'm not making any progress. There are two things you can do right now. Use the dashboard to track your progress. Our dashboard shows how much you've accomplished. Or try a harder lesson on our website. The lessons come with line-by-line -line translations and the hosts explain everything. Now you can understand something you didn't minutes ago. Number four, I'm afraid of not understanding anything I hear. This fear can occur when you hear advanced grammar and vocabulary and it just goes completely over your head. To beat this, simply read along with our line-by-line -line tool. It's the best way to instantly understand advanced conversations. Translations and scripts are right in front of you. For real life situations, learn useful phrases such as, can you say it more slowly? I don't understand. There's nothing wrong with saying that you didn't understand something. So, these are the top four fears and how to overcome them. Luckily, we also have the perfect tools available to help you conquer your fears. Sign up for your free lifetime account, no credit card required, and you'll get the best free online resources. Don't let your fears stop you. Start learning now.